Welcome to round four of the standard metagame challenge with Esper Dance. So far we've played a red black sacrifice deck, an Azorius control deck, and a black white deck. So let's see what's on tap for round four. We'll play first. And this looks like a pretty good starting hand. We have a Scryland, uh, the ability to scry two cards and draw, as well as an Oath of Kaya for any early plays. And at this point, we are going to be putting as many lands as possible on the bottom of our deck so we can draw some more action. So this could be a Jeskai Fires deck or potentially some sort of a red-white aggro deck. And we will use Omen of the Sea on their turn. Doing this gives us a little bit more information about what they're playing and helps inform our draws a little bit. And both of these are pretty good. I think for now, if we are playing Jeskai Fires, the Oath of Kai is not particularly valuable. But Omen of the Sea and the ability to draw and scry is good, so we'll keep that on top. So here we are going to play out the Teferi. I would consider bouncing Omen of the Sea. I think we'll probably end up doing that. The other option is to keep ticking to ferry up and looking to bounce any fires of inventions that land. I think at this point, since we have another Omen of the Sea and some other card draw, it's worth it to keep the ferry on the battlefield and tick up. This also helps to make sure they don't have anything like Stomp to get rid of Teferi when it's at one loyalty. So I'm still sort of expecting Jeskai Fire. Now. They did have the stomp, so this will allow us to force Don't them worry. to find a better way to get rid of Teferi. And here we can draw a couple cards. We'll use Golden Egg on their turn. I'm sorry, Golden Egg on our turn. And Omen of the Sea on their turn. It is possible that they're playing some sort of a weird red, white, blue control deck, but I, I do think this is probably a Jeskai Fire setup. And there it is. So we will bounce that on our turn with Teferi. And we can use the Oath of Kaya to take out the Bone Crusher. Treacherous Blessing is fantastic. And Doom Foretold is excellent as well. Eventually I'd like to get to a point where the Doom Foretold is going to eat the Fires of Invention. For now, we'll bounce it to slow them down. I am not making this up as I go. I could potentially play the Doom Foretold this turn to get it going. They'll sacrifice the Omen of the Sea. That would allow them, however, to kill Teferi. So I think it's better to play Oath of Kaya first. And we'll scry. I like drawing cards, so I'll keep that one on top as well. So 
So I'm expecting fires, and then we'll see what their five mana play is. That is when fire starts to get a little bit dangerous. Cavalier of Gales is a good one. So we are in a little bit of danger if they can stick the Cavalier of Flames. This We're about one turn off of our Doom Foretold really taking out their board. I think here it is worth playing the Doom Foretold. And if they have Cavalier of Flames plus another Cavalier of Flames, there's not much we can do to survive there. I don't think it matters if we shock. I think it is worthwhile to shock here. I don't think this two life will make the difference. And that actually allows us to sacrifice the golden egg if we need to. So net gain of one life. If we can survive this turn. There's a good chance that we can start closing out. But this is a really dangerous turn for us. The fact that they didn't play anything before attacks is really excellent. And before that lands, we better play our Omen of the Sea. Definitely made that mistake before of not playing something before Teferi resolves. Elspeth's Nightmare isn't going to do a whole lot nor is the birth of Miletus. at this point we're looking for more doom foretolds so we're going to bottom both of those you show remorse i'll show restraint that's more like it and they're just looking to replay the cavalier to try to find some action Apologize if you hear the crumpling sound in the background. That is my cat going through a bag. Let me see if I can move her quickly. All right. She's decided to move herself. And here we're going to sacrifice the Omen of the Sea. Dance is a nice one. We'll start with Treacherous Blessing. And we could Kaya's Wrath to clear the board. I think that's probably the correct play. This will leave them with Fires of Invention, but I don't believe there's any two card combo that will kill us from 20. So we should be okay, and then we can really start closing things out with Dance of the Mance. One option that we will have is to sacrifice Treacherous Blessing and get that back with a smaller dance if we really need something right away. Kenrith is definitely a really powerful draw. Second fires is a little bit of insurance for them. A 
We are definitely gonna rid of the treacherous blessing. Now we are in a bit of trouble here. Unfortunately, I don't know if we can double Oath of Kaya this. Three, yeah, we are a little bit short from that. Let's play an untapped non-pain land. We can only get back Omen and Treacherous Blessing here. That may still be worthwhile. Actually, this will work out pretty nicely. Sorry, it's a little bit late here. My math was off. We do have exactly enough to make this play work. So we will take out Kenrith and put both of those to the bottom. And we're really looking for some more Doom Foretolds and uh, another dance. And our life total with a clear board is just high enough that we're still staying out of danger. Hopefully our next Treacherous Blessing will help us draw into another Doom Foretold, and from there we can really start shutting them down. So, Dream Trawler is a good card. Um, Doom Foretold does a fairly good job of dealing with it. So here we can Teferi bounce the Fires of Invention, forcing them to sacrifice the Dream Trawler. That is Let's a nice one. This Let's try this. And a Treacherous Blessing. Uh, we don't need all of these lands, we're happy to discard some of them if we can find some more action. Oh, Ashiak is excellent. And here, I think simply playing Birth of Miletus is fine. Elspeth's Nightmare is not that important right now. It's nice to do this while we can still actually find a planes in our deck. We can pitch some of our pain lands. And as I mentioned, Doom Foretold does deal with Dream Trawler pretty cleanly. So it's going to be hard for them to get enough momentum to play things out so they don't have to just sacrifice to Doom Foretold. And Ashiok will be another dimension that we can add pressure to uh, on this following turn. Definitely like them <laughs> scrying main phase and using most of their mana with no fires of invention out. That is a good sign for us. And here we will sack the treacherous blessing. That's usually going to be our target of choice if we got there. And an Ashiok would be, like I said, another way we can add some pressure. And it seems so like weak. part of their plan is to wait until our Doom Foretold disappears and then start deploying threats. So hopefully we can find another Doom Foretold in the near future. In the meantime, we'll just load up our board.
And again, this deck, as the game goes longer, generates so much card advantage that it really feels like the longer the game goes, the less chance your opponent has of clawing their way back into it. It would be interesting to see if they have an answer for Ashiok. The old Jeskai Fires decks did not really have any answers for Planeswalkers. I'm not sure if there are things like um, Elspeth Conquers Death in the newer lists. That Dance of the Mance will hopefully close out this game for us. Uh, we'll take their card draw. I think here it makes sense to bounce the virus. The nice thing here is they'll get rid of a Clarion, and then when we Dance of the Mance, we'll have a bunch of 4-4s four that will be hard for them to deal with as well. I will surrender every so, I don't think we have enough mana where we can actually sacrifice one of the Omens first, so let's just go ahead and play this for 6. Yeah, that should be enough. And we're not going to deck ourselves. There's always something to check, especially as the game goes longer. Oops. And we'll take out the Bone Crusher. And we can play out a Teferi. I'm known for my expert fight. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. And we'll get rid of a bunch of our extra lands. There's not really much our opponent can do here. All right, on to game two. So, against Jeskai Fires, we could bring in some Dovin's Vetoes or some D Sparks. Um, both will deal with the Fires itself, and the D Sparks can get rid of some of the large creatures they're trying to play. Birth of Miletus seems underwhelming here. Uh, it's a lot better against aggressive decks. And Elspeth's Nightmare also seems very underwhelming. Another card to consider is Mystical Dispute. Uh, it is nice to counter to Fairy for one mana. I think I am going to bring in the combination of Dovin's Vetoes and D Sparks, though, just to keep them off fires. Um, if they can't stick fires, their deck really doesn't function very well. And this looks like a really solid hand. Uh, it's missing a few of the early draw card effects, 
I think having to ferry Oath of Kai and Kaya's Wrath is good enough that we shouldn't be mulliganing this, though. The other nice thing about having Teferi is it does usually give us a chance to bounce Fires of Invention, drawing a card and giving us one more turn before they can really start taking advantage of their engine. So here, we'll take this opportunity to play the land from Fabled Passage tapped, and then we have all untapped lands going forward. Sorry I'm late. I'll protect you. And Next turn, we have the option of playing Teferi or playing Oath of Kaya. I actually kind of like the idea of playing Oath of Kaya with Teferi next turn. That stops them from drawing a card if they're tr having trouble hitting their land drops. And we can always play Teferi and bounce either Oath of Kaya or potentially a Fires on our next turn. As soon as I think of one. Here we go. They do have their fourth land drop. And the fires. They have another play. Okay. So here... I think it does make sense to bounce fires. This isn't a fight to win. Just to slow them down. I have a fight. And we unfortunately don't have Kaya's Wrath mana right now. Here goes but we can play our other Teferi and our Golden Egg at the very least next turn. And if they play fires and another creature, uh, hopefully we can draw planes or some other untapped white source, and that would put us in a pretty strong position. So I think we should actually start off by playing a golden egg since we know we are going to play that for sure. And we can potentially set up a turn where we bounce this and counter it. I'm not sure if that's worth playing the golden egg this turn and holding off on Teferi until next turn where we can actually make that work. I suspect it actually is. So that is not an obvious play, but I think it's the right one because if, again, if we can keep Fires of Invention off the battlefield, that's really going to help us in the long term. And by doing it this way, we at least give ourselves a chance to, and we just hope we can miss one turn of them drawing one of their Cavaliers or Kenna. Fortunately, <laughs> It did backfire. Uh, they would have still been able to play the Fires of Invention and the Cavaliers this turn, but it does hurt that they drew it right away. We still have um, Kaya's Wrath in hand though, so we are definitely not out of this by any means. Got time. Okay, so an untapped white source would be excellent. 
unfortunately that does not do it for us. Ah, but the golden egg does it for us. I am still learning all of the nice small interactions of this deck. So we can go ahead and clear the board. to play that untapped they can scry and likely find some more action but at least this buys us a little bit of time we're really looking for doom foretold here um, that card is the key to our engine and our way of locking out the opponent from the game so another cavalier of gale is a great draw for them um, hopefully they don't hit cavalier of flames off of this draw I do have another Kai's Wrath and I can potentially do it at instant speed with Teferi oh uh, we are not going to get the chance to however they did find the Cavalier of Flame, and that will close out game two. It's going to be our first game lost in the standard metagame challenge. Hopefully we can bounce back. Here. I still think our plan is pretty good. Generally, you want to be more proactive when you're going to be on the play and you're sideboarding. <clears throat> in this particular matchup, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I don't think we have very many other proactive elements that we can be playing. The Birth of Melita is again still pretty underwhelming, so I think we run this one back. And with all the card draw and the two Doom Foretolds, this is an easy keep. We can scry on our first turn, and then we can use the Omen of the Sea to make sure we hit land drops up through Doom Foretold. And as I mentioned last game, Doom Foretold is our marquee card. It is so important to shutting out the opponent and really keeping our engine going. The opponent is also on a mulligan to five, so that will make it pretty hard for them to keep up. As much as I like to ferry, we just want to hit land drops until we get up to Doom Foretold, so we cannot really keep anything that is a non land on top. We'll go ahead and shock. And <clears throat> in this case, I think I'm actually going to Omen of the Sea on my turn. Just in case they brought in Mystical Disputes, we really need to hit our land drops, so we cannot risk that getting countered. Okay, and I think it makes sense here to play Omen of the Sea and then Temple of Silence. And at this point we do have enough land drops. Actually don't really want either of these cards. Oh. Ashiok is very powerful. We don't have our fifth land yet. But I think I am going to keep that because Doom Foretold can help us get there and we have the Golden Egg as well and it's just such a powerful card once we are able to play it. Right on, skip. 
That's more like it. So we will play the Doom Patrol. And then second Doom Foretold should really take them out of this game. Because even if they land a Fires and a Creature, both of them will be sacrificed to the Doom Foretolds. And there's really not much else they can do. And the really difficult thing about Doom Foretold is you can't even just play around it by allowing it to cause you to discard a card and give your opponent a 2-2, two -two, as that also cuts into your resources in hand, and I can buy it back with Dance of Demands. So there really isn't a great way around it. So the opponent actually kind of getting us with that disenchant, though. It's going to cause us to sacrifice one of our Omen of the Sea. Still going to play out another Doom Foretold here and keep the pressure on. And hopefully between the draw off of Doom Foretold and our regular draw we can get our Ashiok down. And in a couple turns we can dance with the Mance to get the Doom Foretold back. Actually. It's really only two turns away if we choose to do that. That was pretty much the best combination of the last cards in hand they could possibly have, but hopefully it's still not quite going to be enough to allow them back into the game. So here, we have the option of Ashiok bouncing something, or Kaya's Wrath, which just seems like a worse version of that. So I think Ashiok bouncing the Fires of Invention is our best play here. Don't really want to allow them to draw more cards with the Cavalier. And then next turn, we can dance of the man's getting both Doom Foretold back. Your heroics are but a dream to me. Let's find out what their last card they drew was. Oh man, that is a really powerful draw for the turn. That may actually change our play next turn. We may need to Oath of Kaya. And we'll take the life gain from our creatures and do that. Uh, when I said Oath of Kaya, I meant Kaya's Wrath. Getting back the Doom Foretold will force them to sacrifice two of the three things. Assuming they keep Kenrith, that's okay. If they just keep Fires, I think that's potentially dangerous. But they would still have Fires anyway if we Kaya's Wrath, so it seems like Dance of the Mance is actually the better play here. And we have three things in there. And actually I don't mind hitting a land drop next turn. I will keep back a blocker. We're not putting any pressure on their life right now. Saving the two health could be 
potentially useful. Although, it is getting really late as our knight has vigilance, so that was just a missed two points of damage. <laughs> That is the one thing I'm definitely still getting used to, is the whole world sees every very silly mistake you make when you post to YouTube. And I think we should be in pretty good shape now. They can draw a card with Kenrith. Um, they can give something haste, but none of that really should do enough to keep them in this game. They made a great effort, though. Um, considering they mulled to five, they did put up quite a fight. And we'll just absorb the two damage there. So the funny thing here is even if they draw with Kenrith, it's pretty unlikely to be useful as they are going to have to discard that card anyway. And we'll see what we can find off of the golden egg. And this is nice, we can actually make them discard the Kenrith. I can draw another card for ourselves while we're at it. Treacherous Blessing, I always like seeing that card. That is one of my early favorites in this new set. I can't foresee a way that we would need to crack the egg here to gain one additional life from where we're at, so we're gonna put that onto the battlefield tapped. And again, the, the funny thing here is it's pretty unlikely that what they draw can really get them back in the game as they're going to be discarding the Kenrith here. Cavalier of Gales I guess might be their best draw. Another Kenrith. Okay, they can take out Artifari. go straight for our life total um, I think we're going to wrap next turn so we'll take it and then at least hit them down to eight oh I've done the hero thing before I like Treacherous Blessing here. Oh, and now the D Spark means we do not have to Wrath, so that is pretty nice. Let's go ahead and D Spark here. Just so they don't have a chance to activate any of Kenrith's abilities and drawing a card if they need to. 
and I think it makes sense to just Oath of Kaya here. Uh, eventually we may want to bounce that with Teferi. This will give us some fodder if we do draw another Doom Foretold, and it helps us close the game out faster. And again, the uh, main phase of Scry with no fires of invention is always a good sign when you're playing against the deck. Well, plus to fairy. I've got time. Put them down to one. And I guess just play a pain land tapped. I can't think of any combination of cards that gets them out of this. Okay. So this does not work. Um, we're going to be able to bounce the Oath of Kaya and replay it. Okay, and we are 4-0 in the standard metagame challenge. Thank you for joining. Um, if you enjoyed that, including the blunders, uh, throw a like and subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you back here for round five in the metagame challenge. Thanks.